Today we'll talk about how to work with UI kit views and layers in SwiftUI. Let's say we want to make an app such as my object detection app for traffic with SwiftUI and UI kit components. The user interface can be abstracted like so. As you can see, we have a blue and an orange section. These sections are views in which we can represent all kinds of stuff such as camera outputs, pictures, documents. In the case of the app, the blue part represents the camera output and the orange part an bounding box for a detected object. To understand how to work with the required UI kit objects to make such an app, we first briefly review the MVC, that is the Model View Controller design pattern. Then we will add a controller to SwiftUI app so that we can use UI kit objects. We use this controller to add the blue view and then also see what a layer is. When we have multiple views, we use coordinate systems to position them. As we will see, there are two such systems. And finally, we see what safe areas are and how they influence the position of hosted UI views in SwiftUI. And with that, let's look at the MVC design pattern. MVC stands for Model View Controller and is the design pattern in which UI kit apps are implemented. Models contain the data and business logic of the app. Views represent the data from the model on the screen and also take the user input such as touch gestures, etc. Controllers pass data between the objects. In UIKit, they have lifecycle methods which can be used to manage a view hierarchy. For example, they can create the user interface once the app starts, or they can react to rotations of the device. For the rest of the video, we're interested in view and controller objects. We will use the controller to construct two views when the app starts. To integrate these UI kit objects in SwiftUI, we host the controller in the SwiftUI view. Let's see how this is done with some code. What we have here is an almost empty SwiftUI project. You can get it by creating a new project and selecting SwiftUI as the interface. I've also created this file named MyViewController, which is empty so far as you can see. The first thing we do now is we import UI kit and SwiftUI. And now we can create a UI view controller object. As mentioned earlier, we can use lifecycle methods to manipulate the app. For this demo, we want to show two views once the app starts. We can use the viewDidLoad method to create and position the views. To host this controller in SwiftUI, we use the UI view controller representable. This is the SwiftUI view, which makes the controller available to SwiftUI. We name it my view controller representable and inherit from UI view controller representable. Let's see how we can fix this error to conform to the UI view controller representable protocol. So now we have the two methods here. And the first one lets us create the view controller. So what we want to do here is we just want to return the view controller. And the second one lets us update the view controller, but we don't need it here. So we just keep it blank. And with that, we have the representable, which lets us integrate the controller into SwiftUI as you would any other SwiftUI view. To do so, we go to content view and we delete all this stuff and we just add the representable here and it should show up. Now to use the full screen we also want to add the ignore safe areas modifier and we will see later what exactly it does. Now that we have the controller integrated let's edit its root view. A UI view controller is backed by a UI view. We can access this view by calling self view in the controller, which we do in the view that load method. We create a variable root view. We can use this to change the view's background color to blue, for example. UI color blue. When we run the preview now, the background should be blue. Next, we can create a second view and make it orange. 
we call it sub view, the UI view. Oops, this is a UI color, orange. To show it on the screen, we have to add it to our blue view as a child view. Add sub view, sub view. But when we run the preview now, we'll see that this view is still blue. The reason is that by default, when you add a UI view to Swift UI, the root view takes up all the space it can get from Swift UI. But child views have dimension 0, 0 by default. So all we have to do is specify a size and width greater zero for the subview. Then we can also place it relative to the root view. We will get to this in a moment. But before that, I would like to take a look at layers. Well, layers have to do with rendering here. In general, rendering in iOS apps is handled by the core animation framework for which we have documentation here. I won't go into much detail, but as this headline says, layers are the basis for drawing in iOS apps. In fact, UI views in UI Kit use core animation layers in the background to render their views. So basically, a UI view is a wrapper for a core animation layer. When we defined the background color in our root view earlier, what happened in the background was that the background color of the layer which is backing the view was changed. In general, it is recommended to manipulate the views and not the layers directly. Drawing shapes like rectangles is done best with layers though. We can access layers by simply calling layer on a view. Let's go back here and delete all of that. And let's use layers instead. So we can call root layer is self view layer. This then allows us to change the background color with root layer background color. And now this is a CG color. And then if we want to make this blue, this needs to be zero, zero. And this produces the same blue background as we've seen earlier. Let's take a look. We can also add a second layer to this root view. And uh, this is then a, a sub layer, CA layer. And we would do root layer, add sub layer, uh, sub layer. And as you can see, this works similar uh, as it does with views. And as with views, this also has a dimension of 0, 0, so we won't see it in the preview. To understand how to change the sizes and positions, we have to take a look at the coordinate systems in UIKit. In UIKit apps, the origin of the coordinate system is in the top left corner. Note that the view is always rectangular, so the rounded corners of the iPhone actually obscure parts of the view. As you can see, we are ignoring safe areas here. When we don't ignore them, the view is shifted downwards. The origin of the coordinate system is now here. It is important to understand that this does not change the dimension of the view. What it means is that the bottom part of the view is actually now outside of the device's borders, as illustrated here. Unlike the top safe areas, the bottom safe area is overlaid over the view, as you can see. Knowing this, we can now place our orange subview. We can set the dimension and position in the parent's coordinate system, the one we just saw, by using the modifier dot frame on our subview. To do that, I'll just uh, delete the layer stuff here and put back the views. So we have the background, uh, the, the root view uh, in blue, and we have the sub view in orange. And now what we can do is we can do sub view dot frame, and this is a CG rect object. And here we can specify dimensions and we'll just do 100 and 100. So that's, that's the position. And then it has a width and a height. And when we now check the preview, we should see the orange subview positioned inside of the blue view. We can also work with a coordinate system relative to the current view. 
And to do that, we just use, uh, instead of frame, we use bounce, but we don't do this here. As you can see, the view now takes up about half of the height of the screen. And we gave the view a height of 400. But the iPhone 13, which this one is here, has over 2,500 pixels in height. So why is the height almost half of the screen? The answer is here in the documentation. Drawing uses a logical coordinate space, which uses points instead of pixels. Each point maps to a number of pixels when the view is rendered on a device. That is to ensure that the app looks similar on all devices, regardless of screen resolution. So we can look up the scaling factors here on the website. And we first see that iPhone 13 has 390 by 844 points, which translates to these pixels. And here is the scaling factor. Now that we know about points, we can look at how safe error has dropped us some of this available space. Here are the sizes and points of safe areas for the iPhone 12 and 13 for both portrait and landscape orientation. In portrait orientation, our visible height of 844 points is reduced to 763 points. Note that, as mentioned before, the top safe area wraps us 47 points in height and pushes the view downwards. So the coordinate of the top edge of the device is now at height minus 47. The bottom safe area, however, just obscures the view. The width remains at 390 points. And with that, we've seen how to work with UI kit views and layouts in Swift UI. We can use this knowledge to build apps which use UI views, such as object detectors. I hope you find this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. See you in the next one.